actually what we were starting to go into last week, and we're going to go into that. I actually have my first three lessons that I try to get you ready for as in regards to the mindset. Uh, in regards to real estate. Next year is going to be one of those years uh, where a lot of us as investors will actually end up getting really blessed based on other people's mistakes. Like yesterday, uh, actually earlier this week, we had a, a guy contact us with some property that he, he didn't even know he owned. Actually, he didn't even know he owned the property. His uh, ex-wife and the father, no, his wife and the father and, and her father went out and bought property and they, and they used his name and stuff like that. And she left. So he said, well, they went through their divorce and then he realized he had six pieces of property in his name in Las Vegas he didn't even know. And the court says, well, uh, these properties are yours based on the way they were purchased. So he said, I can't afford that. Now, but not thinking, the, they, the uh, mortgages was being paid for because they all are rented out. And they got tenants in there. And the tenants in there, he actually cash flowing $200 on each property. You know, times six gives you, what, 1200 bucks a month that he was making. He said, well, I don't want them. So he gave them to me. Took them over yesterday. Six properties in Las Vegas. And I got the point, well, I don't want them. <laughs> so stuff like that happened where people have property. And believe me, people don't want property. Everybody, not necessarily, is focused on actually having something for the future. Most people want things right now. And uh, before the day is out of our, uh, our uh, time today, we're going to start focusing on goal setting. We're going to know exactly, exactly about setting a goal. What will be that goal? Some of the things that you probably didn't even think about. I'm going to jar your your uh, your memory to get you to think of things that you thought about in the past but thought it would never happen but this will actually be an opportunity to start dreaming again. And that's what uh, our lesson that we was working on last week was actually we wanted to go ahead and take a we wanted you to understand what real estate investing is. Real estate investing is something that can be good for you and also if you don't have any direction it can be bad for you because people have people have you heard of people lost money real investing in real estate yeah people have lost money investing in real estate Donald Trump uh, was building a project in Scottsdale Arizona and the people in Scottsdale were protesting and they actually came together and stop Donald Trump from building the project so he moved the project, he canceled the project. Now where's that project at right now? Just yesterday they had a, it's right in San Diego, right on the, the border of uh, of uh, Baja, where they build in uh, 248. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, they sold 50% of them. You know, going from the price of 245 all the way up to four million dollars. So 245 units that actually that they're selling right next to where the you know where the sewage dumps into the uh, <laughs> but they got a uh, desalinization system that they're going to be putting in. So I don't think he would actually build something in. Basically, you know the smell down there is pretty bad, but he has something that he already thought about that far as the environmental uh, impact that he's going to make in regards to changing that down there. But he has lost money. I have lost money investing in real estate. I remember when I first started for 18, uh, after 
my first deal, couple of deals, I did okay. And then for 18 months, I had this streak where I was in the toilet, where I pretty much was losing money. I didn't make any money. I was at a loss because I was trying all these different strategies. I was trying to be slick over here on this deal, trying to do this this way, trying to find some type of strategy where I could actually make the quick buck. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen. And then I realized one thing. Just do the basics. Just do the basics. And once I started doing the basics, I told you last week about the lady with the dogs. You know, just do the basics. Just start meeting the people. I was one of those kind of people. I wanted to avoid meeting the people. So what I would do, I was actually, you know, would send my wife or, or I would actually would talk on the phone versus me actually meeting the people to actually make that connection. And once I start going and using the basics, the basics was actually meeting people. That was it. That was the winning edge over everybody else. Remember, there's not that many people in this business that use the basics. Everybody's trying to use some type of slick strategy. You hear, oh, you can get, oh, you can flip the property. Yeah, flipping the property is hard work. But at the same time, there's people out there that's going to be competing with you. Have anybody been to Craigslist this week? Look at the, do y'all ever look at Craigslist? Craigslist has a section, real estate, on uh, Craigslist. Craigslist had over, they have like a posting where you can post your properties for sale. And they have different other things that's on there. It's another site called Backpage.com. You can post different stuff on there, where because the uh, the the web is going toward this uh, thing where self-built built websites where people would come and they develop these communities. When they develop, you know, you have the the gay community, you have the uh, Christian community, you have all these people advertising and talking about their subjects and forms and stuff like that. But with Craigslist, Craigslist is a company that was started about 11 years ago. And Craigslist actually has a listing. They were doing, they were doing free advertising for people where you can advertise in, com in competition with the newspaper. So people can put a place a classified ad and you can sell stuff because people from all over the world is actually hitting that website. So you can sell something real quick. If you were selling cars, that's what car dealers started selling their cars on, on online. You were selling furniture, you were moving out of town, you were looking for a place, Craigslist was the place to be. Well, Craigslist has had an employee, an employee had got some stock from the company because the company had gave out stock, and he sold it to eBay. <laughs> when he sold it to eBay, eBay ended up owning 25% of the company, which the owner of Craigslist uh, uh, James Craig didn't want to happen. So now it's more everybody knows about Craigslist, but it used to be the, the secret. Everybody would go there and then it was where people would go and they would have dates, they would have rendezvous and all this stuff. They had all these sections and all this stuff there. But the real estate was huge because when the real estate boom was going on, the owners of the property said, I don't want to hire a real estate agent. Why should I give this guy 6% or 3 to 6% of my money and so what they did, they posted on Craigslist. So if you was in Phoenix, you would post your property. People, would, you can go to San Diego, you can go all the metropolitan areas and post in all those metropolitan areas. And people have that connection. San Diego, just this past week, you try to get on there, it was full. It, you, it was packed with people posting their properties. They have 100 postings for each, each section. So 100 posting, they were at 300 just yesterday. 300 posting. So you hit, go down, as it says next 100. You hit again, it's a next 100. Hit again, next 100. Everybody's trying to get out of town and trying to get out of their property because they're in trouble. Yeah, she so told me to bring them a foreclosure letter. So people are trying to get out of town. The foreclosure. People are facing foreclosure, people trying to find a way where they, they can't make their payment, they're a few months behind, they sit, they don't know, they don't understand the system, so they're trying to get out of the market. And what they're going to be doing, they're going to pass you out this list, the foreclosure list, and this, I, I made the first three uh, 
copy of the first three pages so you can take a look. If have anybody ever seen a foreclosure list? Yeah. And sometimes they come in different formats as uh, far as in regards to the foreclosure listing that you would see. You forgot that one. Yeah. Yeah. So the foreclosure listing has a number of information on there as far as the information in regards to how much they owe. Can I get one? Oh, yeah. yeah. And what you see right here, you see as far as this is public record, folks. This is public records. This comes from DataQuick. DataQuick is the, one of the country's uh, uh, largest companies in regards to coming up with information as far as in regards to forecasting, statistics, and everything. And they have a foreclosure list, and they have the listing here of who's the owner, the address. And you see it says site address. Site address is where they live, where the property is located. The mailing address if the mailing address is the same, that means that the person is living there. The owner lives there. If you see the address is different from the address of the of the property, that means that the owner is not, not there. They are renting that place. But and then you see the information that says trustee information. Trustee information is that the property when you buy your property, like it or not. Your property is put in a trust. It's put in a trust by the lender. So the lender shared, you are a beneficiary of that property too with them. So they have a trustee that they would hire, and that would be just in case you actually did what? Foreclose, if they had to foreclose on your property. So the trustee would be the person who would actually put the, um, would actually do the paperwork. Usually, sometimes they have a law firm. Sometimes, sometimes these people are companies that are specialized in doing the legal document preparation. That have contracts with the particular lender, and then you have the lender's information. And this is a person down here who's in San Diego. The lender. You look at the lender. You say, "Oh, is this a private lender?" Yes, it is a private lender. An individual who actually loans out money in this particular case. And then you see where it says default information. It says recorded on 11-21-2006. The amount that the person is delinquent in is what? $213. So somebody's being real anal who <laughs> said you will pay me my money. They're only behind $213. And there's a loan but the loan amount, this must be, a, it got to be an error when I see it. It must be an error because the loan amount is uh, for 595000 Yeah, And as you go down and you look at the, the next one, you'll see these people are behind by, what, 17000 And then the loan that was taken out was actually originated on on uh, June, the, June the 30th of night of uh, 204. So those people are behind in payments. The thing is, when people are behind in the delinquent, delinquent amount, what does that mean? They actually have been behind in their payments for a total of 90 days. So 90 days.